ASRock and 2017 have been hitting so many nails on the head, I'm surprised they even have a hammer left. First they had the X370 Taichi, which is arguably one of the best X370 M4 motherboards out there. They've also introduced some really cool mini ITX boards, and now they've got the X299 Gaming i9, which has all the features that the X299 Taichi has, but also features 10 gigabits per second Ethernet. So like all the motherboard reviews around here, let's put this thing through the paces and see if it is worthy of your money. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and where do we begin with this motherboard? Well, they got the 13 phase VRM with Intersil ISL 99227B MOSFETs. These rated up to 60 amps, and you get 13 of them, which I believe 12 are dedicated to the CPU. So that allows up to 720 amps of power available for the CPU. Now, 65 amp Magic R15 chokes. These are 65 amps, and then you've got Nichicon 12K capacitors. So some of the best components have been put onto this VRM, and when testing this thing out, I had absolutely no problems taking the CPU to 4.7 gigahertz. Now the problem there was that the CPU was starting to hit 100 degrees at 4.7. I could even boot into 4.8, but honestly, if you guys are getting a 7900X, I'd recommend taking it back down to 4.4, 4.5, and when I was doing some VRM temperature tests, even at 4.6 gigahertz, this VRM was only getting up to 60 degrees on the heat sink itself. And it has plenty more room to go. Though if you are a hardcore overclocker and you do want to get really high speeds on the 7900X, which will get insane amount of power draw, then I do recommend maybe upgrading to some water cooling on the VRM, as definitely this 13 phases will be able to take a lot more punishment. And I know there will be some people out there that are wondering, is this eight pin power connector enough for heavy overclocks? And in my opinion, yes, it has been upgraded from a typical eight pin power connector. So they do put thicker components on there and that will allow you to get more power draw. And especially if you've got a really expensive power supply, that eight pin power connector on the power supply will allow additional power delivery over your standard 230 watt rating. I mean, even nowadays on even a standard say Z270 motherboard, you should be able to get a lot more than the typical 230 watt power draw. So before we get on with other parts of this review, this motherboard features a 10 gigabits per second ethernet port. And now one of these cards, one like this, will set you back a few hundred dollars. So the fact that this motherboard has it integrated on board is a really cool thing. And upon testing out the speeds, they were legit. You could get up to 10 gigabits per second ethernet connection speeds. And that's the one thing you will need very fast storage in order to properly utilize these speeds. So moving through this motherboard, we have eight DIMM slots, quad channel memory, it supports up to 4.4 gigahertz of OC on your memory. However, I could only get my memory to 3.3 gigahertz, which is limited to the memory itself. But Steve from Hardware Unbox, who also has this motherboard, said he had four gigahertz XMP profiles working perfectly fine on the gaming i9. Moving along down the board, we also have two USB 3 outs, and one of them is angled as well for better cable management. And you've got a USB 3.1 A and C front out, first that I've seen, and I actually don't even have a port to test this thing out. Down below that is 10 SATA 3 ports, and you also get two RGB headers and five four pin fan connectors, one of which is a water pump and will support double the power of a typical four pin fan out. And then you get a power and reset button and a Dr. Debug LED BIOS readout. However, speaking of the five four pin PWM fan connectors, they can be directly controlled by the BIOS itself. And now in the BIOS, you have a lot of things that you can do. First of all, is this simple and advanced overclocking. I prefer the advanced overclocking features. You can control core voltage, memory overclocks, and also save overclocking profiles on the fly. There's also the ability to instantly flash your BIOS if you just have an internet connection, which does save a lot of time. I'll also be bringing in an overclocking tutorial on this motherboard with the 7900X. So stay tuned for that. And you can also control the RGB lighting via the BIOS, or you can control it via the software itself. And in Windows, the ASRock tuning utility as well allows you to overclock on the fly, which is great for extreme overclockers who have to slowly raise the speeds, otherwise their system could crash when going for liquid nitrogen overclocks. Then running along the bottom of the motherboard, you got two USB 2 front outs and also a TPM connector and a Texas Instruments NE5532 headphone amplifier on the front audio out which is connected to the Sound Blaster Cinema 3. However, that is the software suite. The actual codec itself is the Realtek 1220, which has really good audio out when I connect it to my V-Motor headphones. And also the mic in port is really good too. Even with things like noise suppression turned off, the sound was really good. I'll let you guys have a listen. 
Here's what the V-Motor Boom Pro mic will sound like plugged directly into the X299 Gaming i9 motherboard with a volume input level of 50 and a plus 20 decibel gain. And then turning this thing back around to the center of the motherboard, we have four PCIe 16 speed slots, which support the steel armor, which adds strength to those slots themselves. However, two of those slots are only eight speed, and these are all gen three. And then you've got that one speed mini, which according to the BIOS only supports up to PCIe 2.0. Then besides that, we have three M.2 slots, which are bootable and can be stored in different RAID configurations. As for the cosmetics, ASRock have gone with a gunmetal and black style theme, and this is pretty much throughout all their X299 motherboards. Very subtle, and you also get RGB included on the south heatsink, which is controllable in both the BIOS and Windows itself. And the software is really easy to use, and you can also configure different RGB lights coming out of the two RGB headers on the board. So you can theme it to things like music and also different static and breathing lighting effects. So the last thing on this board is the rear input and output. You get two USB 2s which support 1000 Hz polling, a PS2 port, dual band AC wireless which also has support for Bluetooth and supports speeds up to 433 megabits per second. And then below that you've got a BIOS flashback button which on this board of course you have dual BIOS feature. However, I must say that I do prefer the old school BIOS flick button where you can just switch between the different BIOSes. This however, if the BIOS is faulty on the main, you can just flash back with the backup BIOS to the original BIOS that you had. Below that, you get the clear CMOS button, very handy. And then below that, you get three RJ45 in-out ports, one of which, of course, is the 10 gigabits per second port. There's also four USB 3 ports, one 3.8 and one 3.1 type C. Below that, you have your audio input output with 5.1 analog support and also support for 7.1 channel surround sound. So in conclusion, if you are in the market for an X299 motherboard and you want to get the extra features that the gaming i9 offers, for instance, 10 gigabits per second ethernet, the onboard power and reset button, which is great for a test bench. It's also got that USB 3.1 front out connection and as well as the upgraded software suite on the sound side of things with the creative Cinema 3 sound. However, here's where things get tricky with the gaming i9 X299 motherboard. It currently costs 400 USD, which is a lot to ask for a motherboard. However, feature wise, I personally couldn't ask for anything more from a motherboard. So it does have it all. However, that price is expensive. Though keep in mind, again, you are saving a few hundred dollars if you were to go out and buy a 10 gigabits per second ethernet add-in card. So that is up to you guys, but it definitely offers more features over the Tai Chi. If you certainly don't need things like this and the onboard power buttons and the USB 3.1 front out, then the Tai Chi would certainly be a better recommendation for you. And of course, the last thing I'll touch on is considering how early in the phase it is for X299, I'm surprised the ASRock boards are as stable as they are. I didn't really have any real big hiccups when testing this thing, maybe some old DDR4 memory not being recognized. But again, as BIOS updates come into play, those things will be supported by memory compatibility and also any little bugs will be ironed out, that I'm sure of. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's review. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below what you think of the gaming i9. I personally think in 2017, ASRock have just been doing a phenomenal job on their motherboards. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.